These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So what is organic chemistry? Alright, that's what I'm going for. So that's the, basically, roughly speaking, it's the chemistry of carbon-containing compounds. It's the chemistry of carbon-containing compounds. It's called organic chemistry because I guess organic has to do with life, and it turns out that carbon-containing compounds are very important for biological molecules. Although nowadays, organic chemistry is very important for industrial chemistry as well, say making polymers like uh, polyvinyl chloride or polyesters or things like that. So we're focusing on the chemistry of carbon-containing compounds. Um, so the most basic type of chemistry is for hydrocarbons. Uh, what's a hydrocarbon? CH. Yeah, it has only carbons and hydrogens. So this would be a hydrocarbon, or a pure hydrocarbon. And this would not be a pure hydrocarbon, because it has something besides carbons and hydrogens. So the key elements we'll be focusing on are carbons and hydrogens, and then there might be some other interesting elements as well that take us away from pure hydrocarbons. Do you guys know which of these is saturated and which is unsaturated? So saturated means no double or triple bonds. Or another way of putting it is, do you guys remember those ideas of sigma and pi bonds? Um, does those ring a bell? So does this, uh, how many sigma bonds are there here? One. And how many pi bonds? Two. What, well, one. one. Yeah, one <laughs> pi bond. Okay. So a unsaturated compound has some pi bonds. And a saturated compound has no pi bonds, which means no double or triple bonds. Well, what is this saturated width? Saturated means you have as much as you can have of something. What is this saturated width? Is it hydrogen? Hydrogens. Notice that if I added more hydrogens here, then there would be no room for the double bond. So I can get rid of the double bond by saturating this. You guys might have heard of um, yeah. uh, unsaturated vegetable oil or polyunsaturated vegetable oil. Well, that's a function of how many double or, or, or how many double bonds there are. If something is uh, unsaturated, that means there's some pi bonds, some double bonds. All right, it looks like you're expected to do some simple nomenclature for organic chemistry, that they might ask you some names. Yeah. Uh, all right, so for hydrocarbons, the first thing is, so basically it's a matter of counting how many carbons there are. So for example, as I do remember, um, what's the, uh, the root for one carbon? You can go ahead. Yeah, so the root would be meth. And how about two carbons? Good, yeah, that's good. Now let's keep going. Then butte. So yeah, oftentimes people put these in the wrong order. All right, and now how about the next one? The reason that should be intuitive is because I guess this is Greek or Latin for five, like a pentagon has five sides. Uh, and the remaining roots um, all come, I guess, from Greek. So, uh, so hex, hex, that's right. And then, uh, what's hept? Hept? Oct. That's the one I trouble with, actually, the hept when I heard Oct. And then, none. 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 Good. That's as far as the book takes it. Then there would be un decane and do decane, but I guess this is good enough. So these are the roots. 
So the ones, the only ones that should be tricky are the first four, because most people have a little intuition for um, these these Greek um, prefixes here. Uh, so the memory aid that I have for this is men eat pickled beets. <laughs> the important thing is just to get them in the right order, right? So men eat pickled beets. The mistake people get is they remember that there's a math and an F and a prop and a butte in there somewhere, but they don't remember what the order is. So if you can remember what the order is, and on the test, you might as well just write them down on a piece of scratch paper to start with so you don't have to keep remembering them over and over. So men eat pickled beets. Sometimes I think people confuse prop and pent because they both start with a P, so you want to be careful about that. All right, so what is the name of this compound? Oh, that's the methane. That's methane. And what's the name of this compound? Good. So we use F for the root. And then ain means that there's no double bonds. Ain means no double bonds. So how about the next one? What would be the name of this compound? Prope. So what's the name of the whole compound? Oh, propane. Propane. Prope means three carbons. And A means no double bonds. So this is three carbons with no double bonds. Not this one. Uh, four, so that's butane. Butane. Men eat pickled beets. <laughs> and how about this one? talk a little bit about the bond line notation um, as well for these. I think we went into that a little bit last time. So for example, the bond line notation for this compound would be this. Now in the bond line, so this would be propane. So in the bond line notation, everywhere you have the end of a line, that's a carbon. And everywhere that you have an interior, uh, you have a corner, that's a carbon. So here's another carbon over here. And the big advantage here is that we're not drawing the hydrogens. They're called now hidden hydrogens because we should be able to figure out how many hydrogens are if we need it. For example, we can see this carbon here has showing one bond to another carbon, so it must have three hidden hydrogens to get up to four. How many hidden hydrogens would it be on this carbon? Two. Two, and how many over here? Three. Three, okay, good. So draw the bond line notation for butane. Now you're asking whether we could do this. We could, but that would be a different compound. That would be cyclobutane. That would be four carbons, huh? So cyclobutane would be four carbons in a ring. Uh, but that, that's a detour, because that's, that's not what we were trying to do. We weren't trying to draw cyclobutane. We were trying to draw just regular butane. So some compounds in organic chemistry form rings, and some don't form rings. So it's OK to form a ring, but only if that's what you're, but only, only if that's what you're talking about. So, so far, we haven't started talking about compounds with rings. So, is this a compound with a ring? No. Well, no. So, that's not what, so butane. So, cyclobutane and butane are two completely different compounds. Okay. Uh, well, we wanted to draw butane. So, okay. that would not be this. Uh, let's try again to draw butane. One, two, three, four. Good. So, that would be butane. All right. Let's draw pentane. Well, you did something very important there that seems trivial, but most students don't think to do, which is that you checked your work, which was excellent. <laughs> it's amazing how often students just take a guess and hope for the best. So it's good that you checked your work. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Um, after you draw a bond line notation, you should always go back and do what you did and count the carbons to make sure you actually have the right number, because it, it's very easy to put in the wrong number. All right, so this would be the structure for pentane. And the advantage of this is notice how much faster that is than writing CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. Why bother writing the hydrogens when we can always say how many hydrogens there are anyway if we need them? Mm -hmm. Usually people don't use bond line notation for ethane because that would look a little weird. Right. right? And really for methane, how would you draw the bond line notation for methane? I don't know. All right. <laughs> so usually we don't use bond line notation for these first two. 
You don't want to mi uh, mix bottom line notation and non bottom line notation. For example, this, this is wrong. Once you draw the letter, you're obligated to show the hydrogens. You're only allowed to hide the hydrogens if there's no letter. So this would be wrong. I'd have to write that like this. This is OK. So this is OK. Here I'm kind of mixing bond line notation and non bond line notation. But if you draw the letter, you've got to draw the hydrogens that go with that. The only time you can leave out the hydrogens is for a carbon that you haven't drawn the letter for. 